Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming podcast. Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming podcast. Drop more hits once I'm famous The best, that's what our aim is All platforms, what your game is To the leaderboards are coming See me in a shooter, I can promise I'll be gunning When I hit the music, try to swear I'm gonna run it Can't say one up, you can try but we done it Let's go, alright, let's go To the best place for reviews, I know Xbox One and PS4, we you as far as consoles go They do handheld PCs, merchandise for you and me Contests that you gotta do, the prizes are for gamers who <laughs> Going hard all day, we really the boys cause you're just that great Can't lose this much Let's just take your certified badass when you play. I've been with one up gaming. I've been with one up gaming. I've been with one up gaming. Drop more hits once I'm famous. The best, that's what our aim is. All platforms, what your game is. To the leaderboards, I'm coming. See me in a shooter, I can promise I'll be gunning. When I hit the music, I swear I'm gonna run it. Can't take one up, you can try, but we done it. Let's go. And welcome, it's One Up Gaming, episode 231, it's me David, and I'm so bored. I am so very, 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 very bored. I have had no days off from work for about a year, and they've made me have about 30 days off in a row. I'm about a week into my days off, I'm so bored. But anyway, it's given me a little bit of time to record some stuff. So in this episode we'll just do the games I've been playing and we'll maybe have a look at some news and then we'll do our The One Gaming Game of the Year 2018 sort of list and then that should do for our episode today. So before we start I would just like to say that, well if I can not burp, this week's show is sponsored by our album which is Games Inspired Music. And it's out now on iTunes, Spotify, um, Apple Store, uh, that is iTunes, um, the Play Store, the Music Store, Play Music, whatever it is, the Google Store. Um, yeah, it's a cheap album, it's got 26 bits of music on there, some songs, some just background music. Um, but 20% of each sale will go to the Child Play Charity, so please, just buy the album, even if you never listen to it or never download it, um, as a little bit of money will go to the Chas Player Charity. So thank you for that. Uh, moving swiftly on, I will just sort of say that Christmas and New Year for me was amazing. I managed to work 13 hours on Christmas Day, and I managed to work a night shift 13 hours on New Year's Eve, and also New Year's Day I think it was, I can't remember. So, I just did work all through the, the holidays, and everyone else was sat getting drunk. So anyway, 231, moving on. So the games that I've played this week, or this couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, because I've not been around for a while. Uh, the main game I'd like to talk about, I mean, I'm not going to go through them in detail, you know what I'm like, I don't care. I just mention the stuff that I play. If anyone wants to email us, we'll talk about them in more in detail. But the first game... Tetris Effect. Oh my Jesus golly god of... Yeah. Woo! That game is one of the best games I have ever played in my life. It is graphically, musically, synthetically... Just a little tiny... Flashes of light, the flashes of... Oh, the particle effects. The whole thing, the whole game is Tetris, but so, so well done. I can't believe how amazing that game is. And I bought that. I mean, the only thing for me is I think that Tetris, yes, I know it's a game, but I think this should only be like 20, £25 maximum, whereas Tetris Effect is £35, so it's a little bit more than I'd like to sort of say. Um... But, as I said, it is one of the best overall games I've ever played. 
and it's probably the best game I've played about five years. That's how good this game is. So moving on, the next set of games are nearly all because of the the January sale, the winter sale, whatever you want to call it. So Murdered So Suspect wasn't a great game when it came out, and it's about five years old now, I'd have a guess. And so it's aged quite badly, but it was like pound thirty. so it's like, yeah, I'll get that. So, <laughs> and again, another game that was only about four quid, three quid, I can't remember now, but the Pro Evolution Soccer 2018, so a couple of years, well, last year's game, and still plays well, looks nice. Uh, another game which I always wanted to buy, but I didn't want to pay the 40, 50 quid for, which I'm now glad I didn't, but that's Avon Colony, and it's just not very good. Or I couldn't work out exactly what I was doing in any way. I guess it's... I'd have to sit there and proper go through the tutorials and stuff. Next up. Doom VFR. Now for me. Doom. The new 2016 Doom. I was very disappointed with. I thought it wasn't very good. But everyone else went absolutely bonkers for it. (coughs) But Doom VFR. I turned off the can't move sort of thing the turned off the oh it only sort of like rotates in segments and this that the other so it had a full free roam in full movement of control and i don't think i even got past the full tutorial and oh my god i felt sick really did feel sick um so i don't know if i'd recommend that game or not but next up motor racer 4 now i loved I think it was the first two Motor Racer games. Absolutely brilliant games for the PS1. And this Motor Racer 4 is so fast and twitchy. But it's twitchy in a good way that you can actually control and move. And it's a fun little arcade racer. The Crew 2. Now, I I heard really bad things about this. So it was only about 15 quid. So I bought it. I actually really enjoyed it. It looks amazing, it looks stunning, and it plays quite well. I enjoyed it. But anyway, next up, a game that I've had for, uh, oh god, it must be about nearly half a year now, but I keep playing, Gravel. I love this game so much. It reminds me so much of uh, an old PS2 era sort of Sega game, like like the Sega Rally sort of game. And it looks good, plays well. A little bit... Frame rate issue, a little bit of popping with the old sort of like graphics engine of the Unreal sort of engine. So it must not really optimise for the PS4. Oh, bloody hell, PS4, yeah. Um, Just because it was free on the games for whatever you want to call it, for the PS Plus. Steep. Now, again, it's a game that I always wanted to play because I loved the old snowboarding sort of games. And this is probably the best snowboarding game I've played for a very long time. I miss the old SSX, but the old style ones where they were like races. I never enjoyed the full free roaming sort of games, because I just think that it's just a bit pants. But, yeah, so Steep is worth your time to download. Next up, one of the better games of the year, God of War. I bought that because it was only about, was it £20 in the sale or... 15 but I can't remember now but looks at it looks bleh, try and speak again it looks amazing plays well story great and it's just taking the franchise in a completely new sort of direction and it works for it another game which I put on but I didn't really play but I want to play more of is is it Polybus Polybus something like that the Jeff Minter shooter that looks very basic. Um, but yeah, it, I loved um, Tempest and Tempest 2000 and all sort of games. And I really want to try this game a little bit more, get more into it, see how it goes. I had a quick go at Shemu 1 and 2. And that's in preparation for Shemu 3. And I remember... Absolutely loving Shenmue on the old Dreamcast. Never really got into Shenmue 2. I had it, I played it for a bit, 
but I never really got into it like I did on the first game. And the last game that I'll talk about now, because I've been droning on for what must be 10 minutes. No, not even that, Jesus. Anyway, last game, V-Rally 4. Now, the original V-Rally I loved, hard as nails, hard as nails, keep flipping the car off when if you touch the sides. But when they went to V-Rally 2, and I guess for the 64, it was V-Rally 99, and V-Rally, whatever it was for the Dreamcast, probably V-Rally 2, or it was called something, I can't remember now. But they were absolutely stunningly amazing games to play. This one is so twitchy, you just cannot control the car. It is almost unplayable to me. Um, prove me wrong, but to me, it just doesn't play like you. it should. Um, it should have been tested a hell of a lot more and maybe, you know, changed up a wee bit. But <clears throat> that is the games I've been playing this week or two. So what we'll do now is we'll have a quick break. We'll come back with some news. And then we'll also have our top 10 games of the year for 2018. So we're back after this quick break. Thank you. Back soon. Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the developer of Per Rocket an iOS space game with cats. And I listen to the One-Off Gaming Podcast. You can find a link to download my game at facebook.com slash purrocket. And now, it's this week's news with One-Off Gaming! Right, so we're back. It's still me, David. Still one up gaming. Still episode two hundred and thirty-one, and going to talk about news. So I guess first up with the news is uh, move that to the side. Is the which I think is quite shocking, the Bungie Activision breakup, and it looks as though Bungie and Activision are going to split ways halfway through their ten-year agreement, and Bungie's allowed to retain the destiny sort of IP. So that means that Activision didn't see a future with Destiny, or it weren't making as much money as what they wanted. Um, but yeah, so basically that means that Bungie are going to retain Destiny, so they'll be making more Destiny games, and they're going to support and self-publish the game moving forward. So that's weird. Very weird. So I guess we'll move to the next bit of news. So next up, it looks as though the Fallout 76 is still <laughs> not great. And Bethesda have announced that anyone that bought Fallout 76 will also get PC copies of Fallout Classic Collection. So that's Fallout 2, uh, Fallout and Fallout 2 I believe it is. But they were basically free not long ago or very 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 cheap so again is that really enough to appease the fans of this fallout 76 i'm not quite sure so next up so next up we've got which people might not know this but dragon's dogma i really loved it on the 360 was it 360 i think must have been must have been 360 anyway i really enjoyed the game and now it looks like it's coming to the Switch with all previously released content. And I don't know how well the Switch will run the game, but I'm looking forward to seeing how it runs it because I loved that game so much. And it might be a really good way to play the game. So next so next up, it's announced the, the next two titles to join the NES library on the Nintendo Switch will be Zelda 2. The Adventure of Link and Blaster Master. Now, I don't care. I really don't care. For the money that you're paying for the Switch, you should just get 500 game library just to pick and choose what you want. Especially like the NES sort of games and SNES, all those sort of things. It's weird as hell. But anyway, next up. <laughs> next up, we've got the reactions to. Alien Blackout announcement. And basically, we were all primed and ready for the next installment of the Alien Isolation sort of game. And everything was looking rosy. 
And then all of a sudden it came out that it's a mobile game called Alien Blackout. And it looks kind of like the gameplay of Five Nights at Freddy's where you've got like cameras to sort of like switch and sort of like move things around and stuff. So the game's out, I believe, the 27th of January, so very soon. And don't get me wrong, it might play amazing, but from what the trailers and gameplay they've shown, it doesn't look amazing. But anyway, that's more fun. So we'll just have a quick look at what's next. So just as we were recording this, the Resident Evil 2 demo dropped on the PlayStation Store. And it's one of these demos that it's timed. So you can play it and die and restart as many times as you want. But you only get 30 minutes. And once that 30 minutes is done, it won't play anymore. So you just get 30 minutes to play the the actual game. Um, So that should be quite fun. I enjoy these sort of games because I know sometimes I've bought like the well I've downloaded the the new demos for like the Pez or the FIFA and I've just played them and it's like it's the same game I just don't care but anyway let's see what's next and I guess we'll end with what I think is quite a funny story but we'll see how it pans out in the next couple of years. Um, Slightly Mad Studios, the team who did like Project Cars, Project Cars 2, I think they did um, Need for Speed, Shift, and Shift 2. Um, So they know what they're doing with racing games and realistic sort of games with a touch of arcadeness to make it a bit more flair. And they've announced that they're doing what's called a Mad Box console. And... They've said that the the specs are going to be cutting edge for, you know, like the next... I think they said it's going to be two years in advance of PCs, but it's not going to be released for another three years or something. I don't know. But it looks quite funky, does the design of the box. But I just, I just don't understand why they would do that. I really don't. I guess they're just bored. You know, I just want to put some silicon chips in things. But, yeah... So that's the news for this week. So I will end this bit, put a little advert in, and then we will go to our game of the year. And hopefully you'll get some enjoyment from that. So, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of seconds. Do you have trouble sleeping? Tossing and turning all night. Nothing you do seems to help. You're not getting your recommended six to eight hours of sleep each night. Well... Now there's a solution. Now there's Fat Cat Fly. With Fat Cat Fly, you'll easily get the sleep that you deserve. Download for free on the iOS App Store, and you're guaranteed to get a good night's sleep with very few side effects, as you help a fluffy kitty eat all the junk food that he wants. Side effects may include sleepless system, desire for cheeseburgers, if erection lasts more than five hours, see a physician. Try Fat Cat Fly today. Visit facebook.com slash fatcatfly. Because you deserve a better life. Up next on the One Up Gaming Podcast is 10 minutes of nothing. Will it be the team talking about nothing or a guest interview? Stick around and find out now. It's 10 minutes of nothing. Yeah, 10 minutes of nothing. Hi, it's just me, David, from One Up Gaming. And this is our top 10 games of 2018 and I would like to just have a couple of mentions of 5 or 6 or 10, I can't remember actually how many we've got um, games that I would like to have honourable mentions so these are games that we've all voted for but they didn't get enough votes to get into the overall top 10 so in no order there was Detroit Become Human there was Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, Dragon Ball Fighters, Far Cry 5, the Pokemon Let's Go, so either the Eevee or the Pikachu, um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So there are a few games that we as a team discussed, um, but they just didn't quite make it into our top 10. So, without further ado, 
adieu, adieu. Um, without further hesitation, we will move on and we will give our overall top 10 games of the year. Now, this is basically we all sent in our top 10 lists and number 10 had one point, number one had 10 points and it all aggravate ag it all worked out the most pointed game went to the top and it worked its way down so it took a lot of maths a lot of effort but i'm quite happy with the list so here is our top 10 list so at number 10 soul caliber 6 and for me this is probably the best Soul Calibur there's been since maybe Soul Calibur 2. Uh, so that's been a very long time. I mean, don't get me wrong, Soul Calibur 4 and 5 were decent games, just not great. And 3 was... Yeah, it was on, on the downward spiral. So Soul Calibur 6 at 10. At number 9, Octopath Traveller. Now, this is the game that had loads of demos and trials throughout the year for the Nintendo Switch and it basically is like a 2D sprite game but the whole background's like 3D and it looks absolutely stunning it's like an old school role playing game, RPG, whatever you want to call them and it is an amazing achievement it looks amazing, plays are amazing really good fun really good game um number eight forza horizon 4 now this game nothing to do with the fact it's set in britain but i will say the seasons really do change the world that you're playing in um you know a bit of wet damp fields or a big massive snowstorm it looks absolutely stunning it looks so good and who would have thought that after what was the premiere Forza Motorsport series that the offshoot would be getting so many better reviews and people are now starting to think of the Horizon series as more of the premiere sort of version of the Forza sort of games but with Forza Horizon 4 the handling's perfect, the game's perfect, the game world is perfect, which I think the second game, the world let it down. The Australia sort of theme of the third game was really good, looked nice, but it just didn't quite have the what you need in a game. Whereas Forza Horizon 4, they seem to have got the happy middle ground of everything just being perfect. So, number seven, Hitman 2. Now, people might sort of disagree with Hitman 2 being in the top 10 list because it's more of a, like a, an update, an upgrade, rather than a full-fledged sequel. But the first one was so good. And if you have the first game, it all, all the worlds and everything incorporates into the, the new sort of like UI. When you load it up, you can select all the old missions and the old maps. And the new maps are brilliant. The new updates they've done to the game engine make it look and feel so much better. And yeah, it's just so, so good. So, number six, Monster Hunter World. And with this game, I think what Capcom have done, they have basically just taken the Monster Hunter template and really stripped back some of the... I don't even know what you'd call it, just some of the brain your head against the wall sort of controls and movements and made it play a lot smoother and easier to get into. And with that, I just think it's made the game itself easier to get into, easier to work out what you're doing. And because of that, you can get deeper into the game and you just seem to be sat playing on it for hours and hours and hours. So, number five, Dead Cells. Now, this game is a 2D sprite-based... People call them 
is it like Metroidvania games, which is weird because Metroid was out years before Castlevania Symphony of the Night when they sort of started doing that sort of game. So to me, it's just like a Metroid style game, which is weird. Um, but it's also got the things from like Spelunky and all things like that where you die and you lose progression and this, that, the other. But it's just, it looks amazing, it plays well. The art style is amazing. So, next up, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is weird because it's the third Red Dead game, but it's the second Redemption, but anyway. Capcom, eee, what you like. And people don't know without it, yeah. Capcom made the first game, and then all of a sudden, Angel Studios got bought up by Rockstar, and then all of a sudden, Rockstar added a little bit more to Red Dead Revolver, release Red Dead Revolver, and then all this, yeah, so. Anyway, technically speaking, it's probably the greatest overall achievement ever made within a game, but it's just not fun enough to play through the full thing. It's weird. Certain people absolutely adore it, and other people get really badly pushed away by the game, as it's not a fun game, as they say. I quite enjoyed it. I didn't think it was quite as good as the first one. Well, sorry. Yeah, the first <laughs> Redemption game. Um, but it's still an absolutely brilliant masterpiece of game design and execution. So, number three, we have Marvel's Spider-Man. And this game is going back to what I was saying before, where it's an amazing game, looks great, plays great, and it's just fun. It is fun to play. And I'm just happy that the game came out as well as it did. Um, I'm someone that never touches DLC, so I've heard really good things about the DLC, but I don't. I buy the game, play the game, and turn it off. Never go back to them. Um, and I'm not going to start <laughs> now. But anyway, Spider-Man, the game, it's a brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Number two, God of War. Now, I'll admit, when the first God of War trailers, teasers, gameplay came out a couple of years ago, I was watching the game thinking... I love what they're doing, because to me, the old God of War games, while they looked amazing, I was just really sick of the very simple, spammy button mashing sort of combat. And this game, it's got a little bit of that every now and again, but the game itself feels a lot more fleshed out, a lot more lived in, a lot more detail to the world. And the story's amazing, the game just looks stunning. So that is our number two. And number one surprised me. And because of all the scores that we've been getting from the 1UP Gaming team, I had to go out and buy it. It was a little bit expensive in my opinion. But ten minutes in, I can see why. It is a masterpiece of a game. It is one of the best games I've played in maybe the last five years. And that game is our number one game of the year, 2018, and it is Tetris Effect. Now this game, it's, when I first started it, it was like, I couldn't understand why all the hype was about it. And then all of a sudden, as you got to about, I think it's about 10 chains on the first level, all of a sudden the background sprung to life, the joypad started vibrating in time to the music, all the lights and effects and particle effects were flashing around and I was absolutely hooked with that game. I could not believe how amazing it was. So, it's Tetris. Done brilliantly well. Plays so well. Looks amazing. Sounds amazing. And with that, that is our game of the year. Tetris Effect. So thank you people. Thank you all. This has been What a Gaming of our Game of the Year 2018. So hopefully we'll start doing a few more podcasts, a few more bits and bobs, and coming through into the year. So thank you all. I'll chat soon. Hi, Justin the Voice here. First of all, we'd like to thank you for listening. Seriously. We really like
like it when you listen. Yes. But if you'd like to do more than just listen, if you'd like to help us out, well, we have an idea just for you. Visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Your monthly micropayment will help us keep going all night long, baby. Oh, yeah. Mostly because we usually record at night. Yeah. But don't worry, baby. We got something for you, too. We've got special benefits for all of our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. And that's the game of the year by What Up Gaming. So, Tetris Effect. Brilliant game. Amazing game. So, yeah, thank you. It's been me, David, from One Up Gaming with episode 231. Please visit our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. We have a Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash O-U-G. We have official merchandise at bluecyborg.com and then just search One Up Gaming. Again, we've got our um, CD music sort of like album. There we go, album. That's the word. Available to buy and just search games inspired music on either Spotify, um, the Play Store, the iStore, or iStore, the Apple Store, whatever you want to call it. And 20% of each sale will go to the Charles Play charity. We have our first 100 podcasts available uh, with a Sans Pans Radio interview at audiobooksontape.com. Just search one up gaming. And one pound of that of each sale will go to the Diabetes UK charity. Uh, we've got Amazon links on the website, so please click on them if you're ordering from Amazon. It gives us a small percentage of each sale. We've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, just search one up gaming. We're on Twitch, so just go to twitch.tv slash OUG official. If you want to tweet us, it's at OUG official. And if you want to email us, it's contact at one upgaming.co.uk. And I believe that is it my friends so thank you all for listening thank you all it's been me David from One at Gaming saying thank you goodbye in the hopes of experiencing truly immersive gameplay experience in his lifetime David Cameron stepped onto a particle accelerated rebalance board and disappeared When he awoke, he found himself trapped in a video game world, forced to finish each level, helping protagonist and antagonist alike while contesting with poor design along the way. His only guide, the rest of the One Up podcast team that only he can see and hear. So David and the One Uppers must complete each level in the hopes that the next level will be the boss battle that ends their nightmarish experience.